All right. Who is the sixth president of the United States? John Quincy Adams. John Quincy Adams is correct. And Mr. Myron Proudfoot is king for a day. In the fall of 1945, Allen returned to radio on NBC Sundays at 8.30 with the Fred Allen Show, sponsored by Blue Bonnet Margarine and Tenderleaf Tea. With he and Jack Benny back on the same network, the two rekindled their feud. It came to a climax on the May 26th, 1946 episode with a sketch entitled King for a Day. Benny pretended to be a contestant named Myron Proudfoot on Allen's new quiz show, satirizing the big money game shows of the day. The skit was mostly ad-libbed, and the ending was a surprise to everyone, including Jack Benny, except for Fred Allen. 200 pounds of self-hardening putty for King for a Day. Just what I need. Just what I need. This is just the beginning, King. King, you are over 35. By two years. Fine. That's Jumbo Carter, Uncle Jim, for His Majesty. He is over... <laughs> Effie, Effie, that's what? yipe, backward. <laughs> and here, the piston rod from a genuine Baldwin locomotive for His Majesty the King. <laughs> locomotive. <laughs> and here from Melody Lane Music Shop, this case of 2,000 soybean mandolin picks. These are the mandolins. I just keep pinching myself to believe it. Immediately after this program, Your Majesty will be guest of honor at a banquet at Hamburger Heaven. <laughs> Tomorrow morning, through the courtesy of the sanitation department, you will be guest conductor on the 11-5 garbage run through the Bronx. <laughs> at night, in your ermine robe, you will be whisked by bicycle to Orange, New Jersey, where you will be the judge in a chicken cleaning contest. <laughs> I'm king for a day! And that's not all. Therefore? Yes, we're going to start right now to make you look like a king. Sam of Sam's Super Shoe Shine Stand is here to brush your shoes. All right, Sam. Sam, watch out for the button. Next, the president of the Busy Bee Hat Cleaners is here to block your hat. Take the king's hat, Mr. Bumble. And change the newspaper in the hat bag. <laughs> your suit is a little baggy, king. Boys, take his majesty's coat off. Wait, wait. On our stage, we have a Hoffman pressing machine. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. An expert operating the Hoffman pressing machine will press your trousers. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> For 15 years, I've been waiting to catch you like Alan, this. Alan, you haven't seen the end of me. It won't be long now. I want my pay. Well, you if you don't know what day today is... <laughs> today is the day to get out the tall glasses. The iced tea season is here. Time to enjoy iced tender leaf tea, one of summer's main attractions. Yes, iced tea is raised to its ultimate best by the use of this richer blend. In fact, the iced tea season has played a big part in making tender leaf tea so famous for flavor. Flavor means more, it's more important through the summer months. So everybody sets out to get all the flavor going, and that leads straight to tender leaf tea for finer flavor and more on it. In spite of melting ice, the richer goodness of tender leaf tea persists. The last swallow of the grass is still delicious, still flavorful tender leaf tea. As summer this comes is out, NBC, the, the National Broadcasting Company. You'll notice that announcer Kenny Delmar is unable to get the final Tenderleaf Tea commercial out before the program time on the air ran out. NBC executives were incensed. Allen tried to explain that there was no way to predict how long an audience would laugh. Depancing Jack Benny in his studio certainly caused the audience to lose control. In October of 1946, Allen wrote a skit called The Radio milk -a containing references to the hucksters of radio the vice presidents and clerks who, confidentially, were a bunch of jerks. He was censored by NBC. No longer was Fred Allen allowed to ad-lib. He took out his frustrations in the press, calling the censors the executive fungus that forms on desks. He claimed they were molehill men, because every day they went into work with a pile of molehills on their desk and had until 5 o'clock to turn them into mountains. Shortly thereafter, when on the air, the network cut him off in the middle of a joke. But other comedians joined in. Red Skelton mentioned Allen on his show and was immediately cut off too. But he kept talking for the studio audience, telling them, You know what NBC means, don't you? Nothing but cuts, nothing but confusion, nobody's certain. Bob Hope mentioned Allen and got censored. Finally, 
Dennis Day took the last shot at NBC on his Day in the Life Wednesday night sitcom. I'm listening to the radio, he said to his girlfriend Mildred. I don't hear anything, said Mildred. I know, said Dennis. Fred Allen's on. NBC announced shortly thereafter that its comedians were free to say whatever they liked. It didn't matter. They had been doing it for years. Fred Allen had finally won.